this morning as we begin our prayers on page 9 of your leaf. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We pray together. Almighty God, to you all our hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, and that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? Parthians, Medes, Alumnites, and re residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes. Cretans and Arabs, in our own language we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken to the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. 
Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood, fire, and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter to the Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord.
St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus said, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you, from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been give, you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment. Because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but, I, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. We praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated, dear friends. We get to learn a new song today. Amen. See ya kudumisa. It's Pentecost. Oh, you better wake up. Take the journey with me. Amen. See ya to do me suck. We tried that. So, Amen. It's a very easy song. Amen. See ya to do me suck. See? Amen. See See ya to do me so. Amen bo. Amen bo. Amen bo. Amen see ya to do me so. Amen see ya to do me so. Amen see ya to do me so. Amen bo. Amen bo. Amen bo. Amen see ya to do me so. Yes. I mean, Kato, I mean, Kato, it's wonderful. So, and I know uh, my mom's watching, and Richard, and so I know you're in the in the store, Richard, in Palm Springs. So feel free to sing it out there, Karen in Mexico, sing it out there, and so you meet her. And so this is what it sounds. Amen. Si ya kudu misa. Amen. Si ya kudu misa. Amen, Bawa. 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 Amen, Amen, see ya to do me, sir. Masiti, amen, see ya to me, sir. Masiti, amen, go. Amen, go. Amen, see ya to do me, sir. One more time. Masiti, amen.
Amen. We praise your name, O oh God. Amen, 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 amen. We praise your name, O oh God. And so we are here at this Pentecost because it is a joy to praise God. It is a joy to be on the spiritual journey. On, on, on Pentecost, it is a joy to be in community because I don't want to go to a place where it's always, oh, why would I want to go there? They look so sad the whole time. It is joy to live in community in Jesus. And today, on this Pentecost, we are reminded uh, that the Holy Spirit, the advocate, the divine helper, provides comfort and guidance. How wonderful! This, these last few Sundays, we've been biting into scripture, we've been lifting up together divine friendships, divine community. Today is Pentecost, before we continue into ordinary time, the, the time where we live out what we've been hearing through scripture, uh, the time of beach traffic, of, of, of ice cream, of family time, of, of wonder of leisure, of just enjoying the company of family and friends, we are reminded, just as the sunlight is essential for anything to grow, the Holy Spirit is essential for spiritual growth. The Spirit illuminates our path, offering, offering clarity, offering direction at times of uncertainty much like the sun dispels darkness and brings light to the world. When the Spirit of Truth comes, it will guide you into all truth. Imagine if these advocates are our truth tellers arriving not to speak for me, for you, for us, but to speak to you, to me, to us, revealing our deepest truths. And these truth tellers draw you, draw me in this season, in this Pentecost, into our most authentic selves, our truest selves, transforming our lives. And sometimes it can be uncomfortable, you know, and, and other times there's comfort. Sometimes there's an encouragement, sometimes there's consolation. But in all ways, it is a guide into a, a fuller, more abundant life. And how wonderful that we have the gift of, of light uh, that, that, that strengthens all on our planet. It regulates the circadian rhythms, uh, it influences our moods. I know it influences mine because May Gray, I count it every day on the calendar, nine days of grace. So the sunshine today is a gift because it is essential for the health of all living organisms. And so the Holy Spirit influences, extends to all aspects of our lives, friends, bringing strength bringing transformation, bringing unity. As light reaches every corner of the earth, the Holy Spirit reaches every person, transcending differences. How wonderful that it unites us in, in common faith, like sunlight unites the diverse flora of the very plants, even on our planet. And, and, and sunlight, it strengthens, right? It enables you, me, to grow and flourish. The Holy Spirit strengthens you and me, providing spiritual nourishment and enlightenment. Transforms the energy of the sun into, into food, sustaining life on earth. And so, Reflect on the moments in your life where you have felt the deep power of Pentecost. Where have you seen God's transformative love and work in your life? 
uh, God, an immaterial being that creates time and space and is the ultimate consciousness of love. And even in the midst of challenges, where have you felt the Spirit's presence guiding and nurturing? As you know, I grew up in, in, in South Africa. We have 11 official languages, and then I think the 12th unofficial languages when we mix it all together. So can you imagine just, I, it's, it's a gift to reflect on this as I live outside of the country because just our parliamentary procedures, I think it's cost effective only to print in three languages. Our very Episcopal Church, uh, General Convention, we gather every three years, uh, English, Spanish, French, but we have 16 countries represented Everything has to be translated, so can we at least just be uh, patient with each other, some grace with one another, and is three languages okay? And so, what does that grace and patience look like in our daily life when we're going about to Ralph's and Trader Joe's, and when, I'm, when the car in front of me is two millimeters too far from the white line, and I'm like, go closer to the beam so the beam can go up so I can get out of here? What is patience and grace like for me? Especially as beach traffic starts to get bigger and longer, and I look at the canyon and I'm like, really? The little green dude didn't say, walk. Why are you walking across Legion? And who didn't? Why don't you match main beach with Legions and Blight? And it's all confusing and chaotic. And I know it's a small little example, but it's interesting how small things take us all over the edge sometimes. John Mbiti is a wonderful African theologian. He talks about our ancestors and those who have shaped faith for you. And so, Pentecost through the ages, Whose shoulders, as you sit in these pews today, as you tune in on this digital tightrope of hope, who has been a strength for you? Who has been the, the physical presence of the Holy Spirit, the advocate? Who has inspired you? Who has, has, has encouraged you, uh, reminded you, look how resilient you are? Look how far you've come. Look how strong you are. What a gift yesterday that I got to, uh, to, to preach and be present to someone who had done and has done that for me. He is, is Bishop Chet Tolt. We gave, we, we sat, he was the first African American Bishop Suffolk uh, and Bishop west of the Mississippi, in the western United States, uh, consecrated in 1991, and he was Bishop 861 in succession, meaning there's been 861 bishops going back all the way to the apostles before him, before his consecration. And what did I learn from him? Being a, him being a trailblazer, him being a first, I have been fascinated that, man, in some meetings, I would have had a little bit more fire, but if you know Bishop Chet, he has this calmness about him, where I'm almost in awe that he ne his heart rate will stop, he never goes above 58 beats per minute. And I'm just in awe of what that cope of compassion, that cloak of love, feels like in his presence. He has this gift of helping you feel seen. And do you know what that feels like? Being seen by someone. That's the gift of community. That's the gift of gathering at, as St. Mary's. We, 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 we are mindful of how the Spirit, like sunlight, nurtures and sustains us as a community. 
it strengthens us, it, it unifies us, it transforms us. And in doing so, we become beacons of God's light in the world, reflecting God's light in all of our interactions. Where in your life, friends, where in my life uh, can we allow the Holy Spirit to guide us into deeper truths and transformation? And how can you reflect the light of God? to those around you, fostering unity, strength, and community. And so this Pentecost, I recognize that, that I am intentionally trying to, to shift how I, I, I look at my bucket lists. Instead of looking at what I've not done so far, or thus far, I want to bite into and reflect on where have I, what can I celebrate? So what's one thing this week in your life that you can give thanks for? What's one thing where you can go and celebrate and with holy joy say, yes, I have journeyed through that. And thanks be to God, I am still here. How can you uh, and how can we continue to pray for the continued presence of the Holy Spirit, guiding us, nurturing us like that life-giving sunlight, so that we may grow and flourish in our faith. And that's one of my favorite things to do. Getting home and the sun's out. Oh, just laying in the sun. Do you know what? Are you with me? Do you know what it oh, what does it feel like for you when you are if you are able uh, just to be in sunlight and letting it fully embrace you? Who in your life has been like sunlight for you? Who has brought you that warmth, that encouragement, and that embrace where you can't help but flourish? Let us give thanks for those who have paved the way before us. Let us embrace the light of God, allowing it to penetrate our hearts and this very community. For it is in this light, I think, that we find true joy, we find strength, and I notice this even closer. We find deep unity. The Spirit seems to show up when everybody's together. And how wonderful that is for you, for me. And so let us continue. This summer, let us testify to the truth of Jesus. And let us light the world with the light of God's love. And so as we go and enjoy Vanessa and John's wonderful hospitality and gifts of coffee hour after the service, after we share in this divine supper. Think through, friends, what does Pentecost holy joy look like for you? What does it feel like for you? Imagine the faces of those who have been your advocates, who have spoken truth to you, revealing your deepest truths and guiding you into a fuller, deeper life. Picture their faces. Call out their names as an offering of thanksgiving. That's whose coat I'm wearing today. It belonged to Edward Mackenzie, my grandfather who raised me. Born in Hrafrenet, grew up in Sophia Town, which is named Kofiti, as a nickname. My mother is watching in Johannesburg. She here. And I was born in a strange time because nothing like a young uh, daughter of the local vicar being pregnant when you're 15 and a half. Woo! <laughs> Can you imagine that coffee hour? <laughs> <laughs> to a point where I think I heard it said, he helped me out of church with a baby. 
and said, this is my son. Make it up. So I wear this coat because I miss him. And he has been a true advocate for me. Who are the ones in your life who have given you hope and joy that you might not have noticed initially, that you might have missed because of who knows what, busyness, life, calendars, bills, T-Mobile's too expensive, Spectrum never works, I don't know. Or maybe that's just my <laughs> Call out their names. Open yourself to those who are yet to come. Where is Pentecost happening for you this week? And how can you be a vessel of the Holy Spirit's light in your community? So turn to your neighbor and call out a name to your neighbor of someone who has revealed the deepest truths for you, if you will. Blessings, Richard, as you remember Larry, as a year of his passing in the comments, who has revealed to you, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> Distracting the congregation. Amen, see ya kudumi, that's a little too high, sorry. Amen, see ya kudumi, sa. Amen, see ya kudumi, sa. Amen, bao, amen, bao. Amen, see ya kudumi, sa. Masiti, amen, see ya kudumi, sa.
invite you to stand as you are able, dear friends, as we turn to page 14 of our leaflet and share in a summary of our faith, and praying together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. Let us pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon all flesh and inspire us, O Holy One, that we may proclaim your prophecy of justice and speak your message of compassion and love, saying, Come, Holy Spirit. God looks at the earth and it trembles. God touches the mountains and they smoke. Let your glory go forth into all the world to guide the leaders of the nations and all in authority that they may obey your spirit and bless your people. Let us pray to God. Come, Holy Spirit, come. O Holy One, how manifold are your works and wisdom. You have made them all. Let your glory go forth to comfort all who live in poverty, violence, or threat, that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us pray to God. Come, Holy Spirit, come. The breath of the Spirit breathes new life into all creation. Raise into your resurrection life those who have died, especially those in our hearts. Comfort your life-giving spirit, those for whom we pray, especially those in our prayer list and those in our hearts. Let us pray to God. Come, Holy Spirit, come. For the whole body of Christ, and all who bear his holy name. For Michael, our presiding bishop, John, our bishop, for all clergy, laity, and all who offer ministries, and for all who nurture our life together, that we may serve Christ with glad and generous hearts. From our Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Canada. Let us pray to God. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Let the fire of your divine love descend upon us, O God, to inspire and heal, to renew and empower. That the earth may be filled with your glory, and all creation sing to you in praise through Jesus Christ, the risen one, and the power of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, the peace of the risen Lord be always with you. And also with you. greet each other in peace.
possível, é isso possível. It's a gift to pray with you, it is a gift to see you today, friends. And it is a pleasure and a privilege to share this space with you. Welcome, welcome. If you're visiting us today, welcome to St. Mary's. If you are not new, it is always a good to see you. And if you're not here, I miss you so much. To see you all here today. Wow, well, don't have announcements, but I have some announcements. Uh, fresh hot off the press, we have Parish Voice Pentecost Edition. Please pick up your copy or you will also get one in your email, but nothing like having a hard copy, having a cup of PG chips and dark chocolate digestives as you read the newsletter and get to learn about uh, our clerk and just the wonderful ministry that you are. Yes. And ECW concert. Uh, those tickets will be coming, ECW, Episcopal Church Women, that summer series concert will be coming soon. And so start marking your calendars, it's going to be wonderful. And also thank you for your continued ministry, Karen Zafati and Carol White, as we have an emerging children's choir. And um, the target date is August the 11th, I think, during our 9.30 service. And so uh, we, in the summertime, Ordinary time after Father's Day, uh, we move to 9.30, we combine our community and we get to pray together and be together until we do that from Father's Day until Labor Day. But we'll be sure to send out an email and that way you don't get stuck in traffic when you leave. Isn't that fun? Unless you want to go to Pepper Tree Lane and be stuck in traffic. That just means you can hang out here and park here for free. So, uh, I won't necessarily do this, but it's, well, it's fun to embarrass other Episcopalians because I got to share um, a coffee hour with them in the Upper Peninsula in the Diocese of the Upper Peninsula in Northern Michigan with Bishop Ray, Rayford Ray, a dear, a dear bishop and somebody I know. So welcome, good to see you, and it's a gift to have you here. Bless you, bless you. <coughs> Birthdays, anniversaries, Thanksgivings. Oh, <clears throat> Master Chef. strength, with your healing powers, with your love. Continue to bless him in his creativity, in his entrepreneurial spirit, and bless his home with your love. All this we lift up to Jesus, because I know you love him, we pray. Amen. 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 Ah. of Finding Nemo Jr. So two weeks to go for school, almost there. Prayers today for Oliver, my middle child, who has basketball playoffs at four o'clock. And then prayers for my eldest, uh, Jonah, who will be there studying engineering at Syracuse University. And together with 4,000 other families, we're gonna be fighting at Target, August the 19th, to buy stuff. And to move him into his board. And so if you've got any insight in how I can do that more efficiently or for better, I will welcome that email. It is a gift to pray with you. It is a gift to serve with you. And to all of you who have ever served on the vestry of any leadership in this church, thank you, thank you, thank you. 
Let us with lattices and coffins and oblations of our life and our home life to the Lord. Supper, this meal of thanksgiving, giving thanks to the altar flower that's given to the glory of God, from Dennis and Carol White, in memory of Anne Tolbert, beloved mother. And we also lift up all those who stand in the need of prayer for John Capello, reposed of his soul, and all those in our community who have died. Betty Kay, Loretta Boutreau, Lady Brocourt, Colette Rousseau, Bill Ford, Nancy Guthrie, Ralph Root, Faith Franklin, Jose Chavez, Stephen Perrin, Reverend Dicker Walton Johnson, Dr. Donald Fraser, and John H. We continue on page 16 of your leaflet with thanks. God be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, in fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations, therefore joining with angels and archangels and with all every faith of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. She might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God, living among us. Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. When the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you on the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And your hope and my God. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all. For the forgiveness of sins, whenever you drink it, do this with remembrance of me, my Lord and my God. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Now, gathered at the table of God of all creation, remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves, a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the old earth, and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with St. Mary, our patron, the god bearer and all your sins from every tribe and every language and every people and every nation to feast and banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honour, glory and praise forever and ever. Now, as the Saviour Christ has taught us in the language of your heart, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Alleluia, alleluia.
love for the people of God will you fool the holy people.
to stand as you are able, dear friends, as we share in the post-communion prayer, page 19 of the leaflet. Let us pray together. Spirit of life, thank you for this ordering of boundaries, releasing our desires, this peace of our life. Draw us out of the places, centers of conformity, Friends, may the Spirit be the storm that shakes the foundations, the leaf of a new fire, which turns oppression to ash. May her wildness seduce us with holy desire and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, remain with you and those whom you love now and always. Amen. And now we sing our way to coffee hour. <laughs>
Ja, 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 ja.